The first question is why are we here? Um, and you know, this is a great existential question uh, applied to life, but in particular, why is Climb here? What are we trying to solve with Climb? <laughs> George Church, in his recent book, pointed out that sequencing is a marvellous technology because it's become a million times cheaper and a million times higher throughput since uh, Sanger invented it. But somehow, rather than us spending a millionth of the amount of money we used to spend in those days, we're still spending as much money, if not more, and just creating huge amounts, millions and millions fold more sequence. So we end up with the problem of drinking from the fire hose. How do we deal with all of this data that's coming out of the sequences? That's one problem, the problem of big data. There's another problem, though, which is that if we went back 10 years or, or so ago, we'd look at a sequencing centre looking something like this. And the sequencing centre, whether it was Tiger or Sanger or whatever, it was kind of ivory tower. And you could concentrate all your sequencing firepower in that, in that centre, but you could also put all these expert bioinformaticians to deal with the uh, data. You could put all of your computer hardware to deal with the data. But over the last seven or eight years, we've seen a transformation as benchtop sequences have come in and sequencing has become a distributed activity that is now going on across the whole country, from Exeter in the south up to Aberdeen in the north. Every university in the country is investing in this kind of benchtop sequencing. And in fact, in most universities now, I would say there are multiple groups using uh, these kind of benchtop sequences. So how do we deal with that problem of all of this data coming out? Well, a suboptimal solution is to say, well, at each group that's got a sequencer should also have their own dedicated server and map them one to one. But this is not an ideal solution. It brings a couple of problems. One is it's very inefficient to keep uh, buying and installing and maintaining all those servers scattered around. Um, and Tom made the point that they're effectively being kept in little cupboards and pantries and whatever around uh, universities in, in a very inefficient way of uh, uh, delivering this kind of um, technology, this kind of capability. And the other problem is that there's a skill shortage that actually getting enough bioinformaticians, um, particularly people who can do the systems admin and stuff, uh, is an issue when you go down this route. So that's why cloud computing is here. That's why Climb is here, because we have cloud computing. It's much more efficient because we can buy large amounts of computer kit in one go. Um, and at our steering group meeting yesterday, Tom was uh, impressing us with the amazing bargains that he managed to get when he bought the hardware uh, for the Climb uh, project. Um, the other thing is, of course, though, that we remove a lot of the hassle from the end users. So instead of 50 groups or 100 groups having to buy their, their servers, get it through purchasing, get it plugged in, get the, the sysadmin done. It can all be done centrally. But there's a second reason why it's a good idea, because it provides a mechanism for sharing data and pipelines. So you can produce a standardized setup for doing metagenomics. So Chris Quince could sit down and say, right, this is the best way to do metagenomics, and he could set up all the pipelines and everything working perfectly. Uh, and then he could share that, because you can just take your virtual machine and uh, make a snapshot of it and share it multiple times to, to uh, all sorts of people. And that enhances the reproducibility of science. Um, and so uh, instead of having to kind of reverse engineer the paper and the methods detailed in the paper, you can actually, uh, when you write a paper now, you could make a snapshot of the setup you use to do the analysis and share it. And in fact, uh, we've even discussed the idea that there may be coming in the future the chance to actually give a, a virtual machine a DOI so you can reference it and maybe it will get indexed in, in, in PubMed or NCBI in, in the future. So this saves, also saves research time, of course, so you'd be much more efficient in your research and it also makes training easier. So as we discovered yesterday, the people who came to the workshop, they have their virtual machine, they can go home now and pick up where they left off with the, the work they were doing, the tutorials, and know that everything's exactly the same. So that makes life a whole lot easier. 
So how, how does this work? How does the cloud work? So here's a data center with many servers and much storage. Uh, this is actually me next to the setup that uh, Nick and Simon Thompson have put together in Birmingham. Um, and one of those servers, shown there, we have a user of Climb who wants to spin up a virtual machine and they make use of this server. They get allocated a portion of the hardware to create their own virtual machine. And then we can repeat this uh, with other users and each of these users is getting a slot and so we're making very efficient use of the hardware that we have available to us. Um, but all of this is invisible to the end users. They don't know which uh, machine they're using, what hardware they're using. They may not even know where it's located and which of the four uh, universities. So this is our project, uh, the CLIMB project. Uh, it's a collaboration between, uh, initially between four universities, Warwick, Cardiff, Swansea and Birmingham. Warwick is kind of first among equals in that the actual money comes to Warwick and then we dish it out according to a contract that's been signed. And then more recently, Bath have joined us because Sam has moved uh, from Swansea to Bath and they are now part of the project as well. And what, we, what are we doing? These are the kind of activities. We're providing end users here with the bioinformatics resources, giving people virtual machines so you can go away and do your own research. Uh, we're providing end users with training. We are supporting three research fellows, um, Nick, Chris, and Daniel. Uh, I don't know if Chris is here, but Nick and Daniel are here. Chris was here yesterday. And so they are doing their own research program um, as research fellows independently, but they are also using the resources of CLIMB and um, it, it, in this line of work, it's called dog fooding. But basically, they're eating their own dog food. So they're you, they're, we're setting up the facilities and then they are using them for their own research or they are then devising things that they use for their research and then sharing it with the rest of us and in a way we can be synergistic in the way we move forward. And then we also have bioinformatics research space. So £700,000 spent here in Warwick on refurbishing space uh, about a million pounds spent in Swansea refurbishing space for the bioinformatics community. These are the, uh, the guilty parties, uh, the main uh, academic partners within the CLIMB consortium. Um, and I've, we've introduced the three fellows um, and you're gonna hear talks from everyone during the course of the day. Uh, this is a screen dump from our website, and this is effectively Tom Connor boasting, uh, putting on how, how much RAM we've got and how much storage we've got and how many CPUs. Um, I, the, perhaps the, the, the most uh, salient point there, if we're going to be boasting, is that sentence there that says, this makes it the largest single system dedicated to microbial bioinformatics research anywhere in the world. So that's us boasting. Um, and yesterday, people came, you heard a lot about the system specifics, so I won't go into any details there, just to say that we are running a program called OpenStack to create the cloud, which is an open source program. It's been installed, installed by OCF, and we're also using Ceph uh, for um, storage. So, at this stage, I also have to say a big thank you to all the other people that have been involved in making CLIMB a success. There we are. Thank you very much. So everyone give her a round of applause. Thank you.